She did some uh, great research at the University of North Texas on the use of probiotics in aquaculture instead of antibiotics, which is huge. Without further ado, Dr. Ione. Thank you, Sarah. It, uh, okay, so probably we've got some issue here with people are wondering what probiotics and antibiotics are and how, how they are important in aquaculture. And I spent 30 years of my life actually studying fish. I have been out on board ship in the North Atlantic. I've been culturing ship uh, fish in Texas, as well as in the Caribbean. So I'm a real fish, fish woman, if you like. And can you think about this? Dream a dream where you can walk into any store or any fish market and know that the seafood is safe, right? Wouldn't that be great? I mean, that's what we're aiming for here at this show. We have a fantastic array of people who are providing opportunities for this dream to actually come true. I'm a marine biologist and a marine fish biologist, and this to me means safe, healthy oceans as well. Even though about 80% of the fish that you have on your plates is farmed, it's helping save the oceans, and that's also my objective. So, do you know that we have been associated with fish for a very long time? Did you know 42,000 years we've been living with fish? And in fact, this, um, this was a cave in East Timor in Australia that contained over 28,000 bones of fish. This is not something that, you know, is a recent thing. We have been fishing deep sea fish for a long time. We've been farming fish for over 4,000 years, beginning in 2000 BC in China. So fish are very much a part of who humanity is. But I'll bet you didn't know this. In 1497, Giovanni Cabato, or John Cabot, the guy who discovered North America, by the way, five years after Columbus, on his way home to England, he ran into a huge shoal of cod, Atlantic cod, something I've been studying for 30 years. It was so thick that it slowed his ship. It was a treasure. It started a 500-year-old fishery. Now you're wondering, what does this all got to do with probiotics and antibiotics? We're going to get to that, but I'm giving you a little bit of background in the fish and how important they are to humanity. An English captain said cod were so abundant that, that they reported that we hardly had been able to row a boat through them. Imagine how many fish that would take to slow your boat. Okay, not only were there so many, but they were huge. So we have two objectives when we talk about fish. Lots of fish, big fish, you know, the ones that got away. So unfortunately, in the 1950s, freezer ships began to come. So Cabot went home to England and to Europe and said, hey, there's this huge treasure trove of fish. Come and fish it. So in the 1950s, a turning point occurred because huge freezer fish ships would basically station themselves off the coast of Canada and US and fish our oceans dry. And in 1992, the codfish collapsed in Canada. I'm Canadian, and I spent my PhD actually studying this, and this is a trawler that I was on. See the Canadian flag up there? Okay, so we were assessing the stocks in the 1990s, and eventually the Canadian government said, you've overfished, shut the fishery down after 500 years. So this is a state cod, actually. Whoops. This is a state cod here that, uh, actually this pointer, one of the last state cods, this is Walter from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and these fish are not seen anymore. They disappeared. There's no big fish, so not only are there no, there's not an abundance of fish, but there's no big fish. Okay, so this was a huge disaster for Canada, and later on the United States actually closed their fishery in 94 as well. 20,000 inshore fishermen were put out of jobs. Entire towns closed. 
because of the associated canneries, even you know the 7-Eleven stores that depended upon the people, the fishermen, to come and process the fish. This is a huge economy, and it went bust in Canada. So there was a need for aquaculture. So we come to how we are here today. Most of a lot of the booths that we're seeing are from farm fish. So a lot of things that you see are sustainably harmed fish. So after these crises occurred, after the cod fishery collapsed, then aquaculture began to increase. But there was a need for intensification. You have to grow fish, lots of fish, in order to provide the demand that we're seeing. Look at this seafood, wonderful seafood show, right? Tremendous demand. So aquaculture began to produce fish. In fact, in more aquatic animal food is traded than beef, pork, and poultry combined. It's an enormous business as well as um, a way to provide consumers with fish. In 2012, there was a turning point. So there was more fish produced by farming fish than by catching it offshore. This is my lab. We do a lot of things. This is the website. It's a very busy lab. Lots of fish. We work with a lot of fish, including Atlantic cod. These are my students. I work at the University of North Texas. I run a lab called Marine Conservation and Aquatic Physiology. This are the fish I'm going to talk about today. So we now know the need for aquaculture, right? But the problem with aquaculture is it causes stress. So you pack, you do a lot of handling, you crowd the fish because you're raising a lot of fish, you want to raise a lot of fish. Those fish, uh, because of the feed, feeding the fish as well as waste, cause a lot of water quality issues, which causes a non-sustainable production. Ever heard of cortisol? I bet you have, right? Cortisol is a hormone that makes you stressed. So cortisol causes, this is science, sorry, a breakdown of things it causes also, it reduces growth and repair mechanisms in fish. Growth is one of the things you want in a fish, right? So these fish are really stressed in aquaculture conditions. So what happens? What do you do to combat stress, disease-related issues? You give them antibiotics, right? You give them antibiotics to prevent disease. Now we come to the antibiotics. So look at this graph. So this is livestock, 13,540,000 kilograms in the U.S. last year fed to beef, chicken, and poultry. Humans are the next biggest. We eat a lot of antibiotics. Do you know how many times you go to the doctor and he'll prescribe antibiotics for a cold? Which is silly. But nevertheless, here, aquaculture is a very slim slice of this because in the U.S., Aquaculture is not allowed to use antibiotics. There is tremendously strict regulations against the use of antibiotics in growth, in grow out periods at all within the industry. The only time you can use it is if you treat a fish with this, for disease specifically. But antibiotics is not used, not regulated, not allowed to be used in large quantities in the United States or Canada or for that matter in the EU. In fact, in 2006, general antibiotics was banned for, from use except in treating diseased fish. So fish that are farmed in this country, in Canada, in the EU are safe. They are good, high quality, sustainable fish. They use antibiotics in the agriculture industry because antibiotics increases growth. Did you know that? Did you, did you guys know that? that antibiotics is actually used as a growth enhancement, right? Because you want to grow cattle, you want to grow pig as fast as you can to get them onto plates, right? It's not allowed in the aquaculture industry. But that's the reason why they use it. So what, so what? Okay, so antibiotics gets in the water system. Um, actually, it's now causing antibiotic resistance issues. In 1993, antibiotics in the water system causes an antibiotic resistant cholera that killed 3,000 people. And that was directly traced back to the shrimp industry that uses antibiotics in Brazil. 
Okay? But what really does antibiotics do to our health? Do you, does anybody know? Do you know how it acts? Well, it's antibacterial, right? So if you eat a bio antibiotic pill, it goes into your gut. Your gut is full of bacteria, good bacteria, that help your immune system, that help your health. Antibiotics kills those bacteria and actually drops your immune system strength, as well as many other things. Also, those bacteria make vitamin A. They actually make hormones, and I'll talk about that in a minute. In fact, they make serotonin. Do you know what serotonin is? Everybody know what serotonin is? The happy hormone that makes you sleep, that's very good for your health, that helps your immunity, okay? Do you know this? 95% of the serotonin is produced in your gut by the bacteria, not in your brain. So imagine if you eat antibiotics, what you're doing is you're killing the bacteria that produces serotonin as well as many other things that are good for your health, right? Wrong. So I was really interested. I'm a fish biologist, so I decided I'm going to use a fish. What actually does antibiotics do to the gut? A little bit of science here. So we actually used a little zebra fish and we looked at the gut. See these little bright dots? These are your serotonin receptors. They produce serotonin, just like they do in humans, they do it in fish. This is what antibiotics does. Antibiotics basically delays the development of the serotonin receptors completely. Makes vacuoles, makes an unhealthy gut. If you double the, the hang on, if you double the dose, go back, one more. This is the first dose with 25 milligrams antibiotics. This is ampicillin. Everybody's heard of ampicillin, right? So normal generalized antibiotics. If you double the dose, you get even worse results. And if you don't use antibiotics at all, this is a 21-day-old zebrafish. You can barely see, but here's all these beautiful receptors. And the gut itself has a nervous system. Have you heard of the second brain, right? We actually have an enteric nervous system in our gut that is our second brain that helps us now to um, function neurally to think. If you think about foggy brain, something's going on in your digestive system that actually causes foggy brain. They've actually now shown that the antibiotics use early in childhood, antibiotics is given to children very early on. And they've shown that if you give antibiotics early to children, it actually has downstream effects later in life, like Alzheimer's. They've actually shown that early treatment of antibiotics can lead, in conjunction with bad eating habits and more antibiotics throughout life, neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's, like dementia. It also has been directly linked to autism. So what do we do? Antibiotics was a really good thing, but bacteria were once considered bad. Now we're getting to know that we have 100 trillion friends in our bodies that we could not live without. We have 10 to the 13-fold bacteria than our cells. There's more bacteria in our bodies than our cells. They're that, that important to our lives. So I started working on probiotics. Okay, so antibiotics is bad, probiotics is good probiotics. This actually helps a lot of things. It helps maintain that mucosal layer in your intestine, which is called the gut-associated lymphatic tissue. It helps all the immune system. Our intestine is only, the layer is only one cell thick. A lot of things, IBS is one of the things where things leak through the cells of the intestine and cause toxic, cause brain fog, actually, as well as many other things. So we started with probiotics. Now, ever heard of prebiotics? Yes? Prebiotics is found in things like garlic, leeks, onions, whole wheat. This is the food for probiotics, which now, unfortunately, is not in our gut, but are found in yogurt, kefir, buttermilk, the normal things that you see. And, every, and now the stores are getting, everything has probiotics in them, right? Okay. So we wanted to know if probiotics would help grow fish sustainably. That's what we're getting back, okay? We're getting back to growing fish. So here we go. This is, we started with tilapia. Everybody knows tilapia here, right? And we grew it with a, with a very simple probiotic, one strain of probiotic. See what happened, right? Okay? So here is your control. Here is your fish without probiotics. 
Well, what do you think happens when we add probiotics? Anybody? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, rec no, Stacy knows. Okay, so you think it's going to increase or decrease? Increase, right? Why I wouldn't be standing here waving my hands, right? right. So, okay, you ready? Oh, 1.17% increase. Uh, what? So big deal, right? That was the recommended dose they told us to use. Well, yeah, I don't always listen to people. I do what I want to do. So I doubled the dose. 30% increase if you double the dose of probiotics. That's pretty impressive, don't you think? Huh? That could mean a lot of fish for human consumption and for growth, for business. But is there such a thing as too much of a good thing? What happens if we keep on increasing it? Oh, oh God, one and a half. But we're still 20% increase compared to control. If we double it again, so here we have an issue. You don't have to use an enormous amount of probiotics to get an optimal result. This for business is a really important thing, right? Okay. Let's do it in a little more pictorial format. So this is all science bar graphs and stuff, okay? Let's bring it down to brass tacks, all right? These are fish all the same age. Control, five grams probiotic, 10 grams, all the same age. Pretty cool, huh? That gets the story across more than the bar graphs, although I prefer bar graphs. But. Okay, so that's tilapia, and that's in the lab. I was looking around to see if I could find another probiotic that was used in the field. Found this company, Primalac. It has four bacteria instead of one. And it's done some interesting trials. This is Israel. This is a pond trial in Israel. And they fed probiotics to tilapia. And bar graphs again, sorry. This is probiotic fed survival in the ponds. This is non-probiotic. Lots more survival. This is probiotic weight gain. It's not so much, and I'm wondering how they said, but it's still something significant in the ponds. This is no probiotic, but this is the real killer. All I want you to do is look here. By feeding probiotic, Primalac probiotic, at $15 per kilogram, they save $4,000 just in this trial because they got the, the growth that compensated for the amount, and probiotic was relatively inexpensive. Compared to antibiotics, probiotics are extremely reasonable. Okay, so this is a business model that actually can be built up. Now, to Red Drum the real reason, and my thanks to Copper Shoals, Red Drum here, and to Vicki and Jim Ekstrom and Ekstrom Enterprises, who um, allowed us to use their fish for, these, for this work. And I'm gonna actually say thanks to all the other sponsors at the end as well. But without um, Ekstrom Enterprises and Copper Shoals, Red Drum, we would have never moved to Red Drum. Because I was interested, Tropia is one thing, but think about a red drum that everybody loves to eat, right? So we used Primalac, this new Primalac that we've used, that we found, actually tested well in the ponds. And the first thing we did was ask, OK, this is a larval red drum. Isn't it beautiful? Look at these skeleton. Because if you want good fillets, you've got to have a good skeleton, because the muscle has to attach onto something. So we knew that with probiotics, the Primalac, that growth was beautiful and these fish were extremely healthy. Next, we actually did growth trials, this probiotics. And we found here's your mean mass, C is control, probiotic. This is a four week trial and you keep on getting increase. Story short, 18% 18 more, 18 more growth with Primalac probiotics in the lab on Red Drum. That's the first trial we ever did, okay? Second trial, this is gonna be nine weeks, and we stopped the other one here, but look at the growth of the probiotic. It keeps on increasing, in fact, it accelerates. The second trial, 33% more growth with probiotics in a lab trial. That's enormous, right? Imagine if we can translate that to the industry. 
we can produce sustainable fish I've always wanted to produce. So here's your probiotics and here's your control. Okay. So we have a lot more growth trials planned. We're working with the farmers down in Palacios in Texas, where the farm, where Copper Shoals Red Drum is. And we're really excited about the future. This is the other little piece that chefs in the audience might like to pay attention to. Not only did probiotics increase the growth rate, but this is a beautiful fish, no fin wear, no gray color, beautiful juvenile spots, right? Red drum, if you pack them in high density, start to fight and eat each other. This is a control with no probiotic, probiotics. The tails are nipped and bitten, and the fish doesn't even have its juvenile spots. It's under tremendous stress. So probiotics, to go right back to where I started, actually lowers the stress response of the fish and produces beautiful silvery fish that any chef would love to buy, right? Okay. So I'd like you to meet the four ninja turtles. Where's the pointer? Ah. <coughs> Uh, I'm trying to play it. This is a video, actually. Oh, let's try. Yeah. It was playing earlier. Is there, did you have the file on it? No, it was, it was actually playing earlier. Anyway, this is the f four ninja turtles, nevertheless. I was... These are fish that have been in our lab for a year growing with probiotics. They are beautiful um, examples of very healthy uh, red drum, and we hope to use this example, a fish that we can raise for the next several years. And we actually hope to do feed trials eventually. It was playing beautifully earlier. Anyway, um, thank you. So my whole game, initial um, objective was to feed the world with sustainable, in this case, red drum and other fish, one fish at a time, because I think we all deserve to have sustainable, healthy fish, safe fish that we can walk into any store and we know that the fish is sustainable, but at the same time conserve our oceans, which is because I saw what happened in 1994 when the fishery closed and there was economic devastation in Canada and we actually had it in Massachusetts on, on Georgia's Bank as well. So I hope that by, by using probiotics we can actually produce um, abundant, large, sustainable, safe fish for human consumption. I want to thank again my sponsors, Fortune Fish and Gourmet, Stacy Schultz, who invited me here to speak to you and tell you about this wonderful work. Copper Shoals Red Drum that is run by Ekstrom Enterprises, Jim and Vicki. Vicki is standing in the audience. Um, we could not have done this work without you. And CPACT, which is a, um, a remarkable foundation that stepped up and um, actually funded this work and allowed us to be, um, allowed me to present this work to you. So thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions. I'm going to see if Donatello and I think it's in there. So, any questions? Yeah. So, my company is in this growing. We buy farm raised rainbow trout. Yep. I don't know if you ever heard of Mike Meeker, but he's in Manitoulin Island. And do you think there'd be similar results with rainbow yes. trout? Yeah. In fact, if yeah, can you go back to that slide and see if it'll work? I want you to see Donatello. Yeah, absolutely. See, go back, just have it in that there. Yeah, yeah, and then click there. Yes! Now enlarge it. Can you do that? No, leave it. Okay, see, see their eyes? How, so they, uh, there's two videos actually on here. Um, see their eyes, how they actually move and watch? These are healthy, really responsive fish. Thank you so much.
Isn't that great? Aren't they great? So, to answer your question, yes, in fact, I spent two years up in central Mexico uh, where um, uh, the major part of the trout farms are, are located. And they use a lot of antibiotics up there. Um, and I was trying to encourage them to use probiotics instead, which is a lot cheaper. Um, also, the antibiotics ended up in the watershed, and that area of the world um, provides 20% of the drinking water to Mexico City. So antibiotics gets in our drinking water. That's the problem. So yes, it will work with rainbow trout. It worked with tilapia. It's worked with, um, actually, it's worked with clownfish. It's worked with tilapia. It's worked with red drum. I probably would risk my entire career by saying it will work with just about any fish. But here's the caveat. I think it would be important to optimize the type of probiotic. So I think we're just starting to understand our own guts and our own microbiota. And I think if we are able to tailor make the probiotic for the fish, then you really would get optimal results. But that's a way down the line. Yeah. Right now, I bet I could work with your rainbow trout and increase growth. And I, and I actually... And, yeah, we don't use antibiotics. No, like I've you. died. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, we, don't, we only use... I think he's used them once in the last 15 years because we do a really low density. Right. And um, so probiotics, would you use that? Is that something you'd constantly give? So that's a very good question. Again, mm -hmm. these trials are really early. Mm -hmm. um, the manufacturer of the probiotic would like you to use the probiotic all the time. Just as you, you know, as, as, you as a business, yeah. of course. However, I'm not convinced. I think it's really important in the very early stages. You give the health advantage to the fish in the very early stages when they're growing really fast. However, if, for instance, if you were to increase your densities, or if, where do you grow your fish? Uh, Manitoulin Island. What? Manitoulin Island, Man so Man Northern Ontario. No Northern Ontario, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I come, I'm Canadian, I was born in British Columbia, so okay, and I did my first degree in Queens, in Kingston. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you were to suddenly have an environmental d calamity, say your tanks were suddenly infested by some disease, okay, or if the environment changed and you got a, a temperature spike, what the probiotics would do would allow the fish to respond in, in, to that stress in a much better way. You would lose more fish. You would use, lose less fish if you use the probiotic. That's my prediction. So yes, you could probably wean the fish off the probiotic feed, and you'd probably have that increase in growth that would be maintained. Okay. I, in fact, we've done some some trials that show that if you wean fish off the probiotics, the growth advantage is maintained. But it's an issue of stress. So. Aquaculture farms, low density, high density farms are full of stress, right? So the probiotics is a preventative, is a protective, and it's fairly inexpensive. It would protect your fish from any potential calamity down the line. That would be my. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Well, I appreciate it. You can ask me, I'll be around for a little while. Please do ask me any questions if you have. If you want to come up afterwards, I'm here to answer anything. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. All right, it. let's get a hand for Dr. Ione. Um, like she said, the future of seafood is aquaculture, as many people in the seafood industry will tell you. I will say, um, Fortune, about over half of the seafood that we carry is actually farmed, so that's crazy. Um, but see, um, Fortune, along with a lot of other uh, truly innovative com seafood companies, have formed together to create CPACT, which is one of the sponsors for her research, along right with here. Extreme Enterprises. So just know that there's some great stuff going on in the seafood industry, and we're really pushing for this amazing research and uh, really excited to see what the future holds. Thank so you thank so you much. Again. Thank you, Fortune Fish, and thank you, Copper Shoals and CPAC.